I'm so glad to see you today. My name is Philip Cameron, and you're watching Daily Faith. I believe that God has a plan and a purpose for all of your family, that you have a promise that you haven't claimed, and that is if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Has that happened? But the rest of that verse says, and your house. And I'm going to believe God with you for a breakthrough of household salvation in your family right here on Daily Faith. Aren't you glad God doesn't look at us like, like other people does? We tend to be in our life the most judgmental people in the world. The church, instead of caring for the broken, tends to kill them. We can, we can rule law and, and, and rain law down on people that have failed so quickly and so harshly. And as I, the older I get, I guess, the more I see that everyone needs grace. Everybody needs grace. And grace is the most amazing thing in the world. I, I, was, I, I said the other day in my Facebook page, there's no words to describe grace. Grace is something that God gives to you even though you don't deserve it. It is unmerited favor. And one of the graces that God has put on your life was that he is a contractual God and he has made a divine contract with you, not just for your salvation, but God looked be behind you and beyond you and said, I've got a plan that you won't believe. I'm going to get all your family saved. The crazy thing is that the people that God uses is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. Jesus went to the well of Samaria one day it was lunchtime, and the, the disciples, he sent the disciples to go into Samaria to get him some lunch. Listen to this crazy story. Now, in that t time and in their culture, they would have a, uh, a break, a siesta kind of thing. So you had, try to picture this. Samaria is where the Samaritans come from, and the Samaritans, over a land dispute with the Jews, hate the Jews with a holy passion. They use terrible names to describe the Jews. So Jesus comes to their well and sends his disciples in at siesta time into Samaria to try to find some food. Now there's a job for you. So the disciples go into town and he's left sitting by the well by himself and a lady comes out with a vase to fill up with water. Now that's unusual because you shouldn't be there because you only go to the well at nighttime at the end of the day. And that's when all the women of the village would come and they would get their, their water pots filled so they'd have them full for the next morning. So here we have the disciples going into Samaria looking for kosher food in Samaria when everyone else is having a rest. Jesus sitting by the well in the heat of the day by himself, and this woman shows up with a vase to fill with water. Jesus is thirsty, and he says to the woman, um, could, could you give me to drink? And this woman says, well, the well is deep, and, and you've got nothing to, you, 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 you've got no utensil to get water. And Jesus said, if you knew who's asking you to drink, you'd be asking me to drink. And that begins a discourse between this woman, how this well and how the, our, their fathers were to worship in Jerusalem. And Jesus says, no, no, no. If you worship me, you're going to worship me in spirit and in truth. And in a few moments, this woman and Jesus enter into the most incredible theological discourse that he's never told the disciples yet. He hasn't had this this, this um teaching with the disciples. And here he is sitting at a well with a, Sam a Samaritan woman, a Samaritan woman, and the guys are still in looking for food. It's a crazy, crazy day. But it's about to get way, way, way crazier. So he says to the woman, why don't you go and 
tell your husband to come and see me. And the woman says, I, I, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said to her, well, you've, that's true. You've, you've spoken the truth. Because the husband, the man you're living with is your husband and you've had five husbands before. This is going to blow your mind. Jesus, before the cross, went to reach the Gentiles and who he used to be the first missionary to talk to the Gentiles about him was a woman that had been married five times and was living in sin with the sixth. She wouldn't be welcome in most of our churches. But when she came to Jesus, she said these words which qualified her. Listen to what she said. After Jesus told her that I can give you water that you'll never thirst again, Jesus heard these amazing words of faith from this woman. She said, Sir, give me this water that I may never thirst again. She had such faith in Jesus that she was willing to suspend what she knew about thirst and water. And what he had said to her had made such an impact into her soul that she said, give me this water that I'll never have to come and drink this kind of water again. That's called faith. God's looking for people with ridiculous faith. So as we're talking, she goes away and she passes the disciples coming out with Jesus' chicken sandwich or whatever it was. And she's gone and the disciples all look at each other and, and look at Jesus and look at the woman and they're, they're all going, I've seen a lot of people's futures destroyed by a look. Be careful, be careful how you treat each other. And the disciples come and give Jesus a sandwich and say to him, you know, come on, you, you, know, you have no idea the trouble we had to get this sandwich for you today. It was crazy. We'd awaken this guy up. He was so mad. But anyway, we, here we are. And Jesus said these incredible words. He says, I have meat that you know not of. Look. The fields are white under harvest. And coming out of Samaria was a woman with five husbands and living with the sixth that she wasn't married to. And she was so convinced, convincing to all the people in this Gentile village that had no right to claim on salvation, no right to claim on a relationship with Jesus. This woman was so convincing. She said, come meet a man that has told me everything about myself. And while the disciples were fussing over chicken sandwiches, this woman was bringing her village to Jesus. Can I tell you something? How soul salvation will not come to your family by you worrying over chicken sandwiches. There's bigger things to be concerned over. When the prodigal came home to his dad, aren't you glad the dad was able to forgive him for what he'd done? When God turns your family and they start getting saved, do you have enough grace to forgive them as well as Jesus? I know a lot of folk that would be so mad at what had happened in the past that they wouldn't forgive even though Jesus did. I want to see every one of your family saved. And I want you to look at the most unusual, unlikely sources to bring salvation into your house. Because someone sitting by the well may be the answer to what you're looking for. Might not be what you think, but God has a plan that's bigger than yours. I want to pray for your family right now. I believe that they're lost, but they're not too far lost that God can't find them. I believe that God has a plan that he's put in 
motion to see your family saved. And he's anointed me to pray with you to believe God for household salvation. There's an address, and there's also a website on the screen that you can contact me. I want you to send me the names of your unsaved loved ones. Give me the name, the first name, James, John, Anne, Susan, whatever it is, and I'm going to set myself in agreement with you to believe God for a supernatural breakthrough of household salvation in your family. I believe that could happen this year. If God can save our family, a bunch of drunks from Scotland, he can save your family too. Just don't be surprised if he uses the most unusual events to bring them to the cross. You are so loved. You are so important. And you are part of the plan of God. I've got a book that I want you to get because it'll help you see the promise of household salvation manifest in your life. Watch this. I'll be back in a moment. Full House. It's time for Household Salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. When you send for this book, you are putting your faith into action. You are saying like the woman at the well, I don't have to come back here to drink again. You can wish for your family to get saved all day and all night and nothing happens. But when you start believing God for it, the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please Him. And something activates in God when you stand up in your circumstance and tell the devil, I am believing God for household salvation. I mean, if I were you, I would speak it out loud. I would say, I am believing for my whole family to get saved. The devil has no answer to faith. And it's not just whistling in the dark, hoping that somehow it works. You are standing on the promise of God, and you are in direct will, in line with the will of God for your family as well. I wrote this book. It's about our own family's testimony. You will laugh and cry all the way through the stories that I tell you about our family. It is amazing. I laughed and cried when I wrote it. And at the, at the end of the book, it's teaching on how you can tear down the strongholds of darkness in your family. So please get that book and um, your gift to help us keep our ministry growing. We've got so much more we want to do for the kingdom of God. As you may know, having watched the program Daily Faith for a while, one of the great challenges as we as the Cameron family have is that God sent us 30 years ago. I first went to a country called Romania and adopted a wee boy in that country, little knowing that he was the seed for a mighty harvest to come. You never know when God is going to set you somewhere and make something happen that has repercussions decades down the road. I picked this wee boy up one day in the orphanage. The Lord spoke to me as clearly as I'm talking to you. And he says, I want you to adopt this boy. Now, I had two kids. I had Melody, who was sitting with me here today, and my oldest son, Philip. And I'd been preaching. Any more than two is too many. Two is all, all the kids. Is that right? Yeah. I was, man, and I was good at this. You can't educate them well enough if there's more than two. I, I was good. And it was blown to smithereens when I saw this wee boy in the orphanage. So I picked him up and I said, look, I promise you, whatever it takes, I will come back for you. I took a black and white picture of him, tiny wee black and white picture, and back to my wife and I said, Chrissy, would you like to have another baby? And she almost fainted in the kitchen. I said, no, 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 not, not like, I, 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 but we need to adopt one. <laughs> she, she climbed and she says, oh, thank God, yes. And we went, and by a miracle, we were able to go into Romania and come out of Romania with Andrew 
in three weeks, which is a miracle, with no paperwork. It was crazy. And that set us in motion in our mission journey that we're on to this day. A number of years later, my father read about this orphanage in a town called Inchest. It was called the Dying Rooms of Moldova. And I went there and I walked in. It was 11th of December. And the director said, have you ever seen a baby freeze to death? And my stomach turned. He says, well, so far this year, 16 of our children have frozen to death. Changed my life. Changed my life. I was, I was on all the TV shows in America, recorded a bunch of albums, written books, one book in Household Salvation. The book that I'm going to send you if you're interested is 300,000 copies. I had everything I wanted. Every bucket list thing was done. And I was 30 odd years old. And he broke my heart that day in that orphanage. And I, I started going back. And then I discovered that in Moldova, from those orphanages, when a, t a girl turns 16, she is given a bus ticket to whatever name of town is on her birth certificate, and she's sent away. And traffickers are waiting for them. They've told me that in Moldova, 400,000 girls have been trafficked. They use them 30 to 50 times every single day. One of the statistics in a book you'll get later, if, if you become a, a, a partner with it, it's called Every 30 Seconds. One of the statistics in this book that a girl's lifespan, once the trafficker gets her, is three and a half years. Most of them don't make 20 years of age. And we have an amazing challenge right now. We are building a whole village called Vatra. Vatra Village is where young folk can come from the orphanage, learn about Jesus, be put back in school. And the crazy thing that's happening is these amazing kids are turning into missionaries and they're going back into the orphanages and telling these kids about Jesus. You can be a part of this miracle with the Camerons. I want you to watch this and we'll be back in a moment. Moldova is a nation in a desperate place, torn between the east and the west, stuck between yesterday and tomorrow. It has the highest alcoholism rate in the world and has been voted the unhappiest place on earth. Poverty and alcohol is a deadly mix. It breaks the home. It causes unimaginable suffering. It creates orphans. Children are abandoned as their parents go abroad to find work. Often, they never come back, and children become another statistic in a land of loss. From the orphanage or poverty-stricken village, it is a short step to the arms of the trafficker and a life of unspeakable hell. Standing on street corners anywhere in the world, being sold as much as 30 to 50 times a day, once a girl is broken, she won't fight back. Lost into a world of shame, pain, drugs and violence. Each girl can earn their captor $300,000 a year. Trafficking is more profitable than drugs. Yet, in the midst of all this sorrow, a miracle is taking place. Orphans are finding hope through the work of the orphan's hands. They are finding their broken hearts healed by God's love and hope is turning into action. These amazing kids, once redeemed, have an unstoppable desire to help those who have been left behind. They have become missionaries to those who are what they once were. We are growing. We desperately need more space. We have been praying and God has given an answer. Vatra Village. Six homes that will hold 90 kids. Vatra means hearth, a place of warmth and comfort, something most of these kids have never known. These beautiful homes are not yet complete, but by God's grace, they will be the hearth in the heart of many kids who today are alone. 
In these rooms, care and love, hope and healing will transform pain into purpose and loss into life. Standing a few hundred feet from Moldova's largest lake, Vatra was sold for over one million dollars just a few years ago. Today, it has been offered to the orphan's hands for the miraculous price of $600,000. The owners know what we do. They want us to help the youth of their nation. Just think, for what two captured girls earn in the hell of trafficking, we can buy Vatra Village, a place of hope to save countless lives. Will you help us to save these broken lives from cold street corners and offer them a hearth, a home? Thank you. Each girl makes their earns for their captors $300,000 a year. My daughter Melody is with me. She was part of the inspiration that caused me to do what I did because when I started there in those days she was right at the age where these girls are trafficked and I could not imagine my girl standing on a street corner being used 30 to 50 times a day and as we were watching the video just now she turned to me and said something that honestly I'd forgotten in all of the statistics that we keep in our mind and they're always changing. But she, she turned to me and what did you say to me? Uh, traffickers, they say the average price that they pay for a girl is, is $3,500. And you know, we've been challenging, um, challenging so many of you all to help to purchase Vatra and, and to make that a reality um, for these girls who have nowhere to go. Um, we need 140 people giving a thousand dollars and you know a, a trafficker will spend thirty five hundred dollars all day long not to think about it all day long for for a young girl and as Christians as people of God I don't want to be outdone by the world no they see value as evil as their their value is in these young women are we can we see value their value to almost, Christ. Almost being in, outbid by the traffickers. Yeah, I don't want to be outbid by them. I don't want to be outdone by the world. So when a girl leaves the orphanage, put on the street, yeah. through a false promise of a, a, a job somewhere, the traffickers capture them. That trafficker and his buddies, his cronies, his syndicate, will beat that girl and rape that girl until she complies with anything they say. She becomes completely obedient. They'll sell them. In fact, I've got a friend who was in the room one time. He acted like he was a reporter. And he was in the room with a bunch of guys in Turkey. And they're sitting on a table and they all were on their cell phones. And they were trading these girls. Selling them like, like you would sell a used car. And they were showing the, uh, her attributes and, and, and how her body style was and the color of her hair. And they're, and they're literally selling them back and forth across the table. And he said, I sat there. He's a missionary. And, and, and he, he'd, he'd got inside there as a journalist. They thought he was a journalist. And the average price of an eternal soul, like Melody was, was $3,500. We are trying to buy Vatra Village. We have $140,000 to find by the 1st of July. And we need a miracle of God. I keep saying this, if I were to take you there and say I could buy this whole place for $1,000, would you do it? And I know that many of you would say, Philip, absolutely, I'll be a part of this. But let me tell you, when Melody spoke to me today, don't, would you believe God for $3,500? Will you match the traffickers and say, listen, if they can believe God, or if they can believe hell for $3,500 to put the girl in hell, I'm going to believe God for $3,500 
to raise her out of hell into heaven. And the incredible thing, you know, they're purchased for $3,500 and they make their cap to $300,000 a year. Yeah. And the incredible thing about Orphan's Hands is these girls come into the house and then they go out and minister to people around them and yeah. they change lives, change more lives and bring more lives to Christ. So we're saving them for the good and they're going out and bringing more souls to Christ. Absolutely. So your seed doesn't end with just, just with these girls as they come into their house. It continues and propagates Absolutely. and goes further and further. Um, and I think that's pretty incredible. If a girl's life is three and a half years and she makes $300,000 a year, she makes a million dollars for the, for the trafficker before she's gone. I believe that God is talking to you right now to help us buy Vatra. We'll, whatever gift you can give, there's an address coming up right now. I would like you to call us at 833-DAILY-FAITH and say, Philip, we want to make Vatra a reality in the name of Jesus. We're waiting for your call. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons, and in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their Heavenly Father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the Orphan's Hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today.